to collect all electronic communication between human beings around the world would not have been possible a few decades ago. Just imagine the amount of data we are talking about. But this is no longer a mere fantasy. Today, technology exists that allows for such information to be collected, to be stored and to be analyzed. Every day, the information collected through big data mining is estimated to be the equivalent to at least 4,000 times the amount of information stored in Washington DC at the Library of Congress, the biggest library in the world. And to store this amount of data, the NSA has been building a huge storage facility in Utah. At the same time, the Pentagon is building out its storage capacities in order to process information on the order of yottabytes, a scale so large that we had to coin a new term. And just in case that your maths need refreshing, a yottabyte is one septillion, which is a one with 24 zeros. The sheer amount of data exceeds the limits of our human brain power and comprehension. So in order to engage in big data mining of this scale, a different generation of technology was needed that had become available by 9-11. Technology in that sense was an enabler of comprehensive big data mining. But what does this information look like? How is it being collected? And what does it reveal? The vast majority of data that is being collected, stored and analyzed is so-called metadata. So what is metadata? So metadata um, is easily thought of as the data about other data in messages that pass over specifically the internet, we tend to talk about metadata. So we tend to split data into the content of a communication and the, the metadata which is about it. So the content might be what you write in your email, you know, hello, my name is this, I will meet you at this place. The metadata is information like uh, when the message was sent, who is sending it, where is it going to, um, and that kind of information can be, can be very powerful in, in observing what people are doing on the internet. So metadata means basic records about a communication. This includes IP addresses and phone numbers, when emails are sent, when calls are placed, how long they last, with whom they're being made, from which device they are made, and where a person is geographically based. Metadata, therefore, is not about the content of a communication, but about all the data surrounding a communication. So how is this metadata being collected? A lot of the metadata is collected from private sector companies. For instance, under its PRISM program, the NSA has been collecting user data directly from the servers of nine of the largest tech and internet companies, including Microsoft, Yahoo, Google, Facebook, Apple, Peltalk, AOL, Skype, and YouTube. In addition, however, intelligence agencies are siphoning off internet and telephone traffic that directly enters their territory through so-called choke points. This includes the direct tapping into the physical infrastructure of the internet. The infrastructure of the internet is absolutely fascinating and it's something that we tend to forget when we're thinking about the internet because we're used to talking about clouds and sending emails and thinking of our data as just floating out around there. But the internet itself is a physical entity. It's, it's, there's a lot of infrastructure, there's a huge amount of engineering and you know, the internet weighs an, an awful lot if you want to think about it in those terms. The cables that span our countries and span our oceans, uh, all the computers that are relaying messages for other people. Um, this is a, a huge amount of technology that is, that is physically ringing the planet. Um, and so 
most of us don't understand that or don't consider it. We see telephone lines and telephone cables, and we know in some sense that our data is going over that. But then these cables are connected into other networks of wires, fiber optic cables spun from, from glass and plastic, um, and then connecting up at these massive hub points, these internet exchange points, and then cables physically laid across the ocean. And the original version of this network, what's sometimes referred to as the Victorian internet, was the, the first global communication system that was the telegraph system, which was largely built by the British Empire to keep control of all these countries that they'd conquered. Um, and that was the first time we had one of these, these physical networks that spanned the world. Um, and in many senses, the following telephone network and the following internet network that was built over the phone lines has in many ways mirrored those early bones that were laid down by the telegraph network. It is this physical infrastructure around which the internet is built that allows intelligence agencies to siphon off gigantic amounts of data. And thanks to the Snowden revelations, we now understand more fully how this is being done. Let's have a look at how this is done, for instance, by the British intelligence service GCHQ. Cornwall, on the west coast of the UK, where the undersea water cables of the internet come ashore, is crucial for the functioning of the World Wide Web. About 25% of the world's internet traffic passes through here. So Britain, geographically speaking, is in a wonderful position if you want to tap into the internet. Um, and this is true not just because of the original locations of the telegraph wires that eventually became the internet or, or were laid into the original internet, um, but because Britain sticks out uh, off the western coast of Europe, and then you've got almost nothing um, until you hit America, any information or a large amount of information that travels from the continent of America to the continent of Europe uh, is likely to pass over Britain. And the southwestmost point is down in Cornwall, uh, bued in Cornwall, and that is where a lot of these physical cables make landfall. And so, with all these cables carrying massive amounts of information from America to Britain, but also to the rest of Europe and the rest of the world, um, it's a wonderful place to put a base and tap into these physical cables that run across the ocean. Alongside this information superhighway is a site belonging to the UK government, GCHQ Bude. We now know that this listening station has been gathering and analysing everything that has come across these wires. Any data that passes through the internet could potentially come through these cables. That's emails, BitTorrent downloads, websites, the films that one is watching. The sheer amount of data captured here is almost impossible to comprehend. In 2011, for instance, GCHQ tapped 210 gigabyte cables coming into Cornwall. To give you a rough idea of how much data that is, if you were to digitize the entire contents of the British Library, you could transfer this amount of data through these cables in about 40 seconds. And tapping these wires is surprisingly simple. The data carried by the fiber optic cable just needs to be diverted. Physically, if you want to tap a cable like that, you simply put a kind of mirror that allows data through, that allows the light pulse to go through, but then makes a copy of the light pulse. So if you imagine a mirror that let half the light through and half the light was reflected somewhere else, and what you can do is simply split the, the information. One copy can go to a computer that is logging it all, and the rest of it goes through um, to the original destination of that information. And that's just what GCHQ did. A device was placed into the beam of data, which created a mirror image of the billions of emails, web searches and internet traffic passing through the cables every second. And what you essentially get are two copies of the signal. One going off to GCHQ and one going off to its original destination. And all of the information going over these wires can be stored, replayed, 
and most importantly, analyzed.